Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Warsaw. Welcome to the 22nd House District of Indiana. Uh, I'm your state representative for this part of the state here. I've had the pleasure of doing it for the last few years and uh, up for re-election, so appreciate your vote coming up here in November. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to join me for a thought experience. Imagine, if you will, the executive leader of your state was a Democrat. Imagine if this executive used the outbreak of a very serious virus to declare a 30-day state of emergency with the original stated purpose of being uh, keeping hospital emergency rooms from being overrun. Now imagine if the emergency rooms were not overrun in the following weeks, and yet this executive in your state kept renewing the state of emergency over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Imagine if this executive declared people must wear masks at all times when in public and declared anyone who dared disobey him would be guilty of a class B misdemeanor punishable up to six months of jail time or up to a thousand dollar fine. Imagine if he announced this decree without the legislature ever establishing such a crime or punishment. Imagine if later it became known that when this executive developed this mask mandate for the citizens of your state, he had conspired with the very organization that has supported and funded the Democrat Party for years in your state. Imagine if this executive's health commissioner said we need to keep your state locked down until we get a treatment or a vaccine. Meanwhile, imagine if certain drugs like hydroxychloroquine and z were effectively banned by the same commissioner if the use was in any way tied to the possible treatment of the virus. Imagine that, imagine if after executives in neighboring states back down from their bans on these drugs, this executive still refuses to do so. Imagine if this executive created a list of businesses which he declared to be essential and told everyone not on the favored list that they need to stay home by emergency order. Imagine if millions of people in your state were told to stay inside, to hunker down, virtual political prisoners in their own homes. Imagine if this executive ordered that people could be forcefully removed from their own homes and put into government detention facilities without due process. Imagine if thousands of businesses were shuttered by this order and many would never reopen. Imagine the many citizens who were prevented from working at their jobs as a result of this order. Imagine if this executive forced businesses to enforce his orders by making each business, business in the state submit a social distancing plan to your state government in order to stay open. Imagine if this executive weaponized local health departments, encouraged them to close business who, to the close businesses who did not submit to whatever demands these local health departments put on these businesses. Imagine if this executive declared that residents of nursing homes be held in their rooms forcibly if needed without any visits from family or friends for six months. I, imagine if this order prevented people with medical power of attorney from seeing loved ones and uh, seeing loved ones and friends for whom they were legally responsible. Imagine if this executive declared that churches 
should not have public worship services in your state. Imagine further this executive giving detailed instructions on how churches should serve Holy Communion. However, even as all these restrictions were in place for churches, businesses, and individual citizens, imagine if it was business as usual for your state's abortion clinics. And then imagine if a self-described pro-life group endorse this very same executive for re-election in your state. What about? Imagine if billions of dollars were funneled into your state from the federation to which it belongs. Imagine if this executive declared he didn't need the legislature to appropriate these funds. Imagine if this executive was the only person in the entire state who could call the legislature in for a special session, as the state constitution puts it, if the public welfare shall require it. Imagine if many members of the legislature and even the attorney general of your state pleaded with this executive to call in the legislature for a special session. Imagine if this executive ignored their pleas. Imagine if these emergency powers were being exercised by this executive despite there being no empirical evidence these draconian measures were helping to prevent or slow the spread of the virus. Imagine if these actions had been taken by a Democrat governor in Indiana. What would you think? How would you feel? What would you say? How would you react? What about? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Twilight Zone. Because these actions I've described were not taken, were, were indeed taken by a governor in Indiana. However, these outrageous actions were not taken by a Democrat, but by a Republican. Rhino. None other than Governor Eric Holt. Okay. Hey, I'm not here to make this about Republican versus Democrat, left versus right. I'm here to make a point about liberty versus slavery. Every Indiana politician, from township board members to the President of the United States, and all offices in between, take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Indiana. That's an oath I take very seriously because the first duty of every elected official is to our Constitution. Ronald Reagan famously said that the, most, the nine most dangerous words anyone can hear are, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. He was correct then, he's correct now. The government should not tell you what you must do in order to protect yourself. You have to make that decision for yourself. We do not have the constitutional authority to run your life. But I can tell you, liberty works. Ask South Dakota. We need elected officials who know that even in times of crisis, the constitution still applies. As a Republican, I've been told we're supposed to believe in we're supposed to believe in individual liberty and limited government. Yet at the same time, we have those who say they are Republicans doing the exact opposite. We Republicans do not look to expand the government in any way. We Republicans believe that every person has value. We Republicans believe that everyone has the Every person has the right to succeed. We Republicans believe that everyone has the right to achieve as much success as they desire, and we Republicans believe the government should get out of the way of the American dream. The upcoming election is not so much about who's going to be our next president, or even our next governor or representative. This election is about what this country will think is most important. Will our country want more liberty or more security? Are we going to be free or slaves to an unrelenting state? Does freedom win or does slavery win? The choice is yours. When you go to the polls, remember what you've heard here tonight, not just from me, but from everyone else. We have the most sublime constitution ever derived from human intelligence. 
and it's time we start defending it. God bless you. God bless the state of Indiana. God bless America. Thank you.